Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In the past couple of months, I have really enjoyed learning about fluorescent rocks and minerals. You know, uh, I went from having a long wave light only to also getting a short wave light, which uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed. And part of this, uh, I've wanted to learn a lot more. And I do have a couple of books on the subject, and that is good. It's a good baseline, in my opinion. Um, well, I joined the Fluorescent Mineral Society recently so that I could have access to their amazing newsletters, which are very well written, very technical, and I've really enjoyed being able to have access to those. Well, when I joined the Fluorescent Mineral Society, I, uh, they just so happened to have a new member contest going on where uh, they were going to randomly select one of the new members as uh, a, a potential winner of a giveaway, which I won. So now... Uh, I won two more lights, these guys right here. Um, it, one is a short wave and one is a mid wave. So I went from one long wave to two long waves, which that's really good. Uh, you know, me and Sarah do this together. Uh, now I have two short waves for me and Sarah to do that together. And now I have a mid wave light. So the long waves are 365 nanometers. The short waves are 255, 254 nanometers. And now we have this guy right here from Stymac, green tail cap of 310 nanometers. Now, it is very cool. <laughs> it is very cool to re-explore my own collection of rocks and minerals and see what looks extra cool under the mid wave. And while well, they, they answered that for me, is really easy. It is calcites. Calcites look incredible under mid-wave light, at least the ones that I have. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be looking at some rocks under this mid-wave UV light, and uh, I think it'll be pretty good. Probably take some photos as well, and uh, I'm very, very surprised at the way some of this stuff looks. The calcite looks like fire. Here is a whole assortment of different calcites or things coated in calcite that on the surface look a little meh. I mean most calcites are not exactly very flashy in appearance. Uh, maybe not so much this guy right here um, which is nice calcite crystals. I mean some people will call these calcite pineapples uh, but it's just a spiky uh, kind of yellowish piece of calcite. Obviously, you know, just kind of your very standard pieces of calcite here, right? Well, let's hit the lights and uh, turn on this mid-wave. Look at those. Those are crazy. That is just so incredibly uh, orange. That is like a bright, bright neon orange. And if we compare it to some of the other spectrums that we have, like long wave and short wave, here's some long wave. You can see it is quite minimal what we get here. And some short wave, we'll get a little bit more of a reaction. Like we get a little bit of color out of those. I mean, that's kind of a very uh, faint pinkish hue. Similarly back there, there's a little bit of pink to that. But the mid wave really sets this off. And you know, the different spectrums of light clearly uh, cause the electrons to go to a different orbit. I mean, that's just, that's wild looking. Now, as I've gone through some of my jars, I'll see things like this, where I'm just like, that I didn't even, did not even expect to see uh, something glowing like that under the mid wave. Now these three rocks back here, 
you can kind of see there's some little pieces. These are rocks from the Hanson Creek Road cut that I collected. And it's neat because you can see the undissolved calcite. Um, and some of these, like this piece right here, let's line that up just right. It's a mixture of like purples and pinks and oranges. It really is quite, quite beautiful. I do, um, I mean, it's just, we could just keep going on and on and on here, how these things can look so bright and colorful under different waves of light. But one thing that I really wanted to focus on was this little pile right here. These pieces of calcite right here, I collected a while ago at the Evans Camp Road Cut. And you would expect, I would expect, for whatever reason, <laughs> that they should all fluoresce the same, being that they came from the same seam of calcite, from the exact same locality. But instead, they're actually quite different, which is not something I was really uh, expecting here. So let's uh, shut the lights off a little bit. Okay. Those are obviously a nice deep purple. We have a little bit of a blue coming in there. And then we get into some pinks. Those came exactly right next to each other. So we have purples and pinks. What is the determining factor? I have no clue. I have no clue whatsoever what in the world is actually going on here. And what would the trace mineral be in this calcite that would cause such a uh, dramatic change in the color? I did take some photos of these different calcites under the UV light, under the mid-wave, and you can see here that it does look pretty dang cool under, under the mid-wave. And I'm using the same uh, photography techniques that we spoke about in the shortwave video. So if you want, you can go check that out. Now, um, I did take some photos as well of this Norbergite from New Jersey. And I did so both under just a normal, normal light. Long wave 365, mid wave 310, and short wave 255, 254. And you can kind of see the difference as we cycle between these. Different, uh, different spectrums really can make things look incredibly different. And it's very cool to see. Interesting way of exploring the hobby. Now, now that I have several UV lights that I can do some comparisons with, I have found more similarities than differences, which um, maybe people like that, maybe people don't. I don't exactly know. Um, but the big difference, um, which you'll see about at some point here in the future is uh, when you take a very high powered light like this uh, UV beast, UV beast light and uh, this little guy here, sometimes the little one is actually nicer for taking photos. Like the super bright, super bright, high, very powerful lights can kind of almost uh, be a little too much um, when it comes to taking photos and videos. Um, maybe you care about that, maybe you don't. Um, as an example, so the big difference between this uh, Midnight Minerals light and this one from Stymac, obviously we have two very different sizes. This one just has a 18650 battery in it. This has two, are they 26650s? Um, so these are big, these are big uh, rechargeables. So maybe form factor matters to you, you know? I mean, uh, obviously from the perspective of having things in my backpack, this is a little bit more handy than this. Um, does that matter? Maybe someday it will matter, but for the most part, I think these are both fa fabulous lights from what I could tell. And uh, yeah, kind of a short one, I know, but I've really been enjoying the fluorescent minerals. And now I have a long wave, a mid wave, and a short wave. And it definitely has me uh, kind of daydreaming about other things that I can do with these. Well, I'm gonna leave some links down below 
to the Fluorescent Mineral Society and the Fluorescent Mineral Facebook group, which is actually quite good as far as Facebook groups go. So you can go check that out as well. And with that said, we'll leave this one here, everybody. Thanks for coming by. I'm glad that I won some lights and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.